Good morning, and thank you for joining us. Um, so today we're going to, we, in some of our previous sessions, we've been talking about long COVID and um, some of the symptoms and how, what you can do um, to reduce your symptoms, particularly of dysautonomia. But we thought we would just go back to basics and discuss what is long COVID or the medical definition of post COVID syndrome. So first of all, Boone, have you been seeing a lot of patients with, um, with either long COVID or post COVID syndrome in your clinic? Good morning, Mel. Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, so we run at Imperial, uh, the syncope diagnostic unit. And as part of the unit, we perform tilt table testing. And I have seen uh, very many patients in the order of 30 to 40 patients now coming our way uh, who have been referred for a tilt because they have symptoms that are not fully explained by any disorder in a single organ system. For example, the symptoms cannot be explained by just having lung impairment or a pulmonary embolus or a heart impairment from inflammation in the heart muscle or myocarditis. And these are patients who present typically with a whole plethora or constellation of symptoms that can involve things as varied as gut disorders, such as reflux, palpitations, shortness of breath, fatigue, temperature dysregulation, um, insomnia, or inability to get a good night's sleep. And one of the things that we are starting to establish is that there is an underlying cardiovascular pattern uh, that we're seeing on the tilt table test that I'll come on to in the short while. So, so the answer is yes, we're seeing a fair few patients and we're getting a, a better understanding of what drives the whole plethora of symptoms which are not immediately uh, connected uh, if, if uh, we didn't have a unifying theme. Yeah, because I was going to ask, if you're an autonomic specialist, why are patients with um, this plethora of symptoms being referred to you? Why are they coming to you? Is there an autonomic aspect of, of long COVID? Yeah, so we, we published a paper um, in January of this year, and uh, I'll put the link to the uh, end of the webinar. But the uh, paper is entitled Autonomic Dysfunction in Long COVID. And uh, the the, the findings that we felt we needed to get out were described in uh, the first initial series of five patients who were sent to us for TILT, and we were spotting a very common theme or pattern. If I may take a step back and perhaps share with you uh, my, my, my screen, there, there is this uh, syndrome in cardiology, which we recognize as postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. It's a dysautonomic phenomena that was initially described by a, um, an, an American, uh, actually a Portuguese um, physician called Jacob Mendes da Costa, who in the civil war in the States noticed patients come, coming in from the front line in the American war, um, describing symptoms that he would later on call the irritable heart syndrome. And, and importantly, some of these patients that, that uh, he saw had never seen battle. In, in other words, they were waiting on the sidelines, preparing for battle and looking at all their comrades coming back with significant injuries. And that got them in a state uh, where they describe a whole group of symptoms very similar to what we're, dis we're seeing in patients with long COVID, but also very similar to patients that we've seen over the years with this condition called postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. And if, you, and if you see um, uh, the common themes in patients with POTS, and we relate that to this great study, which was published uh, just in a recent few months, looking at characterizing long COVID. And here the definition of long COVID uh, may vary slightly, but NICE, which is the uh, UK-based uh, National Institute of Clinical Excellence, defines it as any persistent symptoms uh, over 12 weeks after the initial COVID infection that cannot be sufficiently explained by uh, a cause, such as, for example, pulmonary embolus or a heart failure uh, from a myocarditis. So these um, symptoms that are described in this group of 3,762 patients who responded from 56 countries showed the long COVID 
group of symptoms. And what was common in uh, this and the group of patients that I see uh, with POTS is that these things that I've circled in red are commonly seen also in POTS patients. Mm. And these are some of the, 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 the kind of major findings that we found to suggest to us at Imperial that the process of long COVID is a dysautonomic process because after all, the autonomic nervous system is that bit of the subconscious involuntary nervous system that controls so many different aspects of our health, which um, we don't need to think about. We don't need to so, consciously control. Yeah, so dysautonomia then is presumably an impairment of the autonomic nervous syndrome. So uh, um, uh, autonomic nervous system. So an impairment of that fight or flight response and the rest and digest. So perhaps, so do they become confused or those signals become mixed up? So it's very difficult to know what uh, is the exact cause and why long COVID can cause this. But one fundamental principle of uh, treatment of patients with POTS is to bolster the um, blood pressure and blood filling. And by, say, by saying this, I, I mean that there are different forms of stress. So if you think of this scenario where you're about to go for a job interview or you're about to take to the stage to give a very important speech and you're not a public speaker. And so you're about to go and embarrass yourself. Well, in your mind, you're thinking this is not going to go well. I couldn't imagine feeling, and I have felt this way um, because my heart develops palpitations. I feel butterflies in my tummy. And sometimes I need to go and I'll have a loose bowel motion, or I'll have to empty my bladder. Now, if you think about that very carefully, your brain thought, your, your thought process and your fear of going up on stage has exerted a very strong physical effect. That physical effect causes you to have palpitations, difficulty in breathing, sweating, and needing to empty your bowel and or your bladder. And this is and uh, uh, a great example that you can, that most of us can relate to of an autonomic stress affecting your bodily functions that you don't normally control, right, Mel? So, mm -hmm. so if you think about what is autonomic dysfunction in the context of infection, think about uh, the fact that your body is on high alert system. And that is, the example I gave you was an emotional stressor, i.e., you're about to give a lecture or you could be angry or you could be afraid. There, are, There is another way that our autonomic nervous system gets stressed out and that is a physical stress. So running a marathon or you know, running for a bus, that gets your heart rate up, your respiration rate up. And this is all a natural response to running. But in long COVID, it is our belief and experience that the third form of stress prevails and predominates, Mel. And this third form of stress is called orthostatic stress, uh, derived from the Greek word ortho, change in posture, static, standing, still. So when you stand still and fight gravity, because the difference between lying and standing is gravity, the blood starts pooling down from your core circulation, which is the brain and the heart. And what happens is that this uh, pooling reduces your blood pressure very transiently and leads to an activation of a reflex mechanism that aims to correct that blood pressure fall. And this is where the dysautonomia comes in because there is a very strong exaggerated fright or flight response activation that sets in motion all the symptoms you would get if Hmm. you are going to go and give that lecture that you were very afraid to do so. So the body's response to standing up is really quite finely regulated and it? it's quite a sophisticated mechanism. And I guess any sort of stress on the body uh, or long COVID syndrome or a viral illness will just uh, maybe highlight that stress. And that's why some people get the symptoms. And do we know why some people get long COVID and others don't? It's a great question. And I, I, I think the answer to that question is that some people have a predisposition to having their autonomic 
set point dysregulated slightly easier. And by saying that, um, this again comes from the experience of patients with POTS. So um, in my experience, patients with a low normal pre-existing blood pressure are those who are going to be susceptible. Those patients who have never drunk a lot of water throughout their lives, they're like camels and they can get by without water. And they were just about getting by with a blood pressure, for example, at 105 or 102 over 80 pre-COVID. Those patients with low normal blood pressures would then have a reset of the blood pressure set point. Because if you think about it, how is our blood pressure regulated? Each of us have a different set point. And that set point is determined by genetic factors, but also by our environmental factors. For example, how much we drink, how much we have salt in our diet, how much we're living in a cold or hot environment regularly or in a seasonal change. Uh, and these are all driving factors that force our autonomic nervous system to redefine the set point of our blood pressure. And mm. in, my, uh, in my hypothesis, uh, which is not proven, I think COVID can uh, cause a dysregulation in that set point. So uh, it's quite difficult to understand, but one analogy could be like this. You have a refrigerator unit and you set it, or an air conditioning unit rather, and you set it at 18 degrees, right? On a hot summer's day. Hmm. Now, when you open the window and the hot air blasts in, your refrigerator unit compressor will detect, hang on a minute, the temperature is going up to 22 degrees and the compressor will kick in. And so the refrigerant will, will, will uh, the, the air conditioning unit will have to work harder and use more energy to cool down that, hot environment. Now, what long COVID could do to your blood pressure stat. So in a air conditioning unit, this is called a thermostat. So you can dial down or up the 18 degrees to 1920 by turning a knob mm. on the air conditioning unit. We all have a blood pressure stat, which means a set point that our brain, which is the autonomic nervous system controls that blood pressure. And that in my mind is called a blood pressure stat. And that is finely balanced. And all throughout your life, you have that blood pressure. And in fact, your heart rate stat, and in fact, your blood volume stat, if you can call it these things, is all finely balanced by the autonomic nervous system. Now, when something like long COVID affects you, these uh, stat levels can be changed. And so like the air conditioning unit, for example, may suddenly be changed to 16 degrees or 14 degrees, which is way too cold. So can your blood pressure also be suddenly changed by your autonomic nervous system from let's say 105, if that is your baseline normal blood pressure without symptoms to 95. I and see. So that's the blood pressure that your body then starts to operate recognize at. Recognize as normal. Yes. Yeah. So it operates at a new normal. And yes. the new normal is, is very abnormal and very symptomatic for you because not only does it change your new normal blood pressure, there's, some, there's something much more subtle that it changes your new normal blood volume filling, which yes. is a, a very complex regulatory uh, hormonal or neurohormonal uh, concept where the kidneys and the brain and the uh, circulation interact to maintain mm. a fixed level mm. of blood volume. So for example, Mel, if you had five liters of blood circulating in your, in your body, pumped by your heart every minute, after long COVID, that drop in volume could bring you to 4.8 liters, mm. let's say. And that 4.8 liters you really would not like, and it would trigger the symptoms of dysautonomia because you need to get back up to the filling of five liters. And then combined with a lower blood pressure and a higher heart rate, we can see how lots of these symptoms then happen. Palpitation, shortness of breath, tachycardia, chest tightness. That's, a, that's really interesting because a lot of the patients I've seen, and I've not seen as many as you, are people who are very healthy with low blood pressures in their pre-COVID life. Um, they've done a lot of exercise traditionally um, who seem to be quite disabled after it. So that, that explains that very well. Thank you very much, Boone. You're welcome.